Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here for our Saturday Sweep Up. This is January. We are doing organization every video in January. We, the royal we, <laughs> you, me, everybody. Uh, and today it is going to be talking about pre-cuts. What do you do with them? What do I do with them? And then I'd love to get uh, pictures and sharing from all of you that have figured out what to do with your pre-cuts. Uh, also, I want to talk to you about a sew along coming up that starts February 1st and it is Stronger Together. And so we'll look, sort of dive into that so that you can do that. You can actually download the patterns. Now it is a fundraiser. And this is another thing we will sew in February. So I wanted to get it up there. All right, so let's go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the organization first um, because pre-cuts, they are gorgeous, gorgeous. What is a pre-cut? It is a fat quarter bundle. It might be a charm pack, which are five inch squares. These are a full fabric line. So full fabric line, you will find sometimes partial fabric lines done in like layer cakes. And I mean, um, in the, these uh, fat quarter bundles, uh, you have charm packs. There are jelly rolls, and you might also see something called strip sets, which means they're, they're like a flat thing. They just don't roll them like this. They do them flat. Banner Text does theirs like that. Uh, there might be some other configurations. They generally should be, they should be like 42 strips. Yeah, and that's consistent across the companies. That way pattern writers can write things for that number. Same with the charm packs. Uh, Fat quarter bundles vary greatly in how many are in here. There could be 15, there could be 35. It just depends on the fabric line since it's one piece from everything in the fabric line. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? There are also things called fat eighths. It's half of a fat quarter. I believe that's primarily Moda that does that. You might see some from Andover. Uh, Everybody has a 10 inch squares or layer cakes. Uh, they might come wrapped. They might come just with a, a strip paper around them. And these are one, they are for again, 42. So if the fabric line doesn't have 42, there will be some duplicates. So if it's a smaller fabric line, you might get almost two of everything. Uh, a bigger fabric line, you might just a couple of them, you'll have two two of the same print. And like for a Benner text, they put all the fabrics on the back so you can see them. And then uh, exclusive to the Fat Quarter Shop is a Jolly Bar, which is half of a layer cake. So that's a pre-cut unit. Uh, and you can do lots of things. You could do like two, you could do one of my Oh My Stars quilts because just cut it in half and that's two charm packs like this. So how do we store things like this? Because first of all, like here's the one that I'm going to do the bountiful quilt with. They are gorgeous. They're so pretty. They're packaged beautifully. Do you ever try to take one out, like like take it out so you can look at it and then like try to stuff it back in so it looks tidy? Yeah, it's impossible. It's like trying to fold your sheets, you know. It's just impossible to get it back in there. I, I keep thinking I'm going to invent this tool so that we can stuff it back in there so it looks pretty again. Like, <laughs> so like, I think decorating with these is really a great idea. <laughs> you get them and you just sit them around. Yeah, just sit them like this, like Sherry McConnell. So I went and borrowed Sherry's photo of her studio. I don't know if it's a current one or not, but uh, look how beautiful that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a working that's like a backdrop for her videos or something that's it's beautiful though isn't that pretty that's what you do with pre-cuts and bolts of fabric <laughs> okay so what do real people do huh what do we do um first of all believe it or not i don't buy a ton of these i sort of buy what i think i'm going to use like if i um you know i will buy more of the layer uh, more of these um, fat quarter bundles or possibly a layer cake on speculation just because i think it's pretty um, but then generally i found that i um, don't buy a ton of them i just buy them and, and i pretty much use them then in the projects and so they go with the project bin that's where mine end up going i don't really have a pretty place to store them i guess if i cleared all of this off I could store a beautiful set of pre-cuts over there. Like even like maybe get a little step shelf or like one of those, I have a pretty red cake stand. I could put that and put some jelly rolls stacked up on it. Uh, you know, that would be really 
pretty. I, I could do that. Um, but what I find is that like I have one of my blue bins has, I only have a couple of jelly rolls and so they're in there and uh, same with the jolly bars. They're in a bin, one of the blue bins. Right now I do not have a lot of charm packs. Sometimes I'll go in a little charm pack frenzy and I'll get a bunch of them. Right now I have a couple of sets that I want to do Oh My Stars with. And then this is one that came with an order the other day. Uh, layer cakes I tend to have more of right now because I really like the patterns in the layer cake books. And so these 10 inch squares I find are really useful for that. This particular one is my sleepover. So that's what I've been gravitating towards and they just pretty much go you know like in the bin to wait for being a project and they're not on pretty display although I would love to do that I think it would be beautiful to have them out like that <laughs> so to so your job today <laughs> should you decide to take it on. So first of all, if you have some great storage, um, like Sherry's you know, showed us, uh, you could show us that. Show us your storage of your pre-cuts, your you know bundles, your layer cakes, you know, would you have a particular way of storing it? Um, if you just want to work on your space, then do you want to, how do you want to keep them? Think about this. Do you want to keep them all together? Is that how you'll think about it? When you go to work on a project, are you going to go like, how, let me, do I have a charm pack that works for this? Is that how your brain will work? You know, do I have a fat quarter bundle that will work for this? Um, you know, I could see that more like, you know, like you want to do that. Or have you done like me where you've gotten like a layer cake and you're like, okay, this layer cake is going with this quilt because I want to make this, I want to make this up into a quilt and here's the pattern and boom, they're together in a project container and that's where they are. So if you're like that, let me know. You can just tell me here in the description box at YouTube, or you can go over and say, you know, talk about it at the uh, community group, uh, Quilt Along Pat Sloan at... Uh, Facebook yeah that place <laughs> so that is our our project for today because they um, they can get shuffled around and get lost in the shuffle particularly these charm packs they actually have minis like a fourth of this they're like two and a half inch squares little mini charm packs and those are great for like matching some color if you want or you just want a little variety and then you there's a bunch of patterns for a two and a half inch square so they work for that and it's nice to it's kind of nice sometimes just to be able to buy a little something when you're in the store and speaking of store <laughs> today is a local quilt shop day at least I read that somewhere. So give a shout out to your local quilt shop that you love dearly. Uh, just say who they are. You can link to them if you uh, tag them in Facebook, you know, do that at sign and put their name. Uh, so give them some love today, your local quilt shops. They are our hangouts, great places to go and visit. Yeah, some of you visit there a lot, I think, which is good. We like it, yeah. <laughs> All right, behind me is scissors and thread. Let me just hold this up. This is made with my, oh, I forgot there's pins in there. Hold on. So this is made with my um, promise. No, this is made with sleepover. Duh, come on, Pat. Brain engaged. Okay, this is sleepover. And it is Wendy Shepard's pattern. So, ah, uh, isn't this fabulous? So fun. Now you could do this as, you know, this one's got nine nine spools um spools and thread so if you want to do you could do just uh, six of them you could do just one but I, i'm going to do another one i'm going to do just one so i can hang it on the wall in here uh, and i might do the do a pink one maybe like this like this come on this guy at the bottom there we go like him look at the quilting look look at the wave with the pearls can you see it Oh, love it. And then I have the wide back, my wide back from sleepover in blue. So, so, so fun. I am working. I will be working as you're watching this, this day on Saturday, I will be working on the calendar for February. And that one, there's like, <clears throat> probably do two a week. One, two, three, four, five, like five weeks, four or five weeks, something like that. Um, to to make it or I might just do four weeks three 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 and then wrap it up so that would be then we can just do it all in February 
so I'm doing the calendar, so I haven't actually put the day. Let me see. Oh, did you see my shirt again? This is ta-da! This is because I am excited for February. I am ex February is my favorite winter month because hearts, 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 and red, red, pink, hearts, flowery things, chocolate. Yeah, who can't love February? So I love February. I'm looking forward to it. I've got the pillow cut. I'm just sort of randomly showing you things today. Then I have one more thing here. <clears throat> then I do a few Q&A. So I have the pillow cut. I have to quilt it. I'm probably going to use the pink thread, I think. Either that or I might get like a more a persimmon color or something like that. And I'll just do the wave stitch across, you know, so across, across it. I do need to press it good though. I've got a couple of strong wrinkles on there from the fold. So I want to get those out. So, and I just used a piece of solid for the back because I don't want to quilt through with the batting against the feed dogs because that creates so much dust in your, and lint and crap into your sewing machine. Mm. It's just worth it to put a back on there. All right, let's talk about Stronger Together. I did this one last year. Um, this might be the third year the Fat Quarter Shop is doing this. It is a quilt along a fundraiser for the United Negro College Fund and it is designed this year by Michelle Ramsey of Quilts with Love. So I'm, Michelle is new to me so I'm going to go look up uh, her work and she'll be writing about it on Quilts Made with Love at Instagram. That's where she will be posting most of her things. Uh, the fabric that she used here, I'm going to post some pictures up here. The fabric that she used was designed by Rashida Coleman Hale uh, for, um, for Ruby Star Society and I'm going to show you the fabric uh, as well. It is a smaller piece so, so, and there's also a cross stitch that goes with it. Like last year, um, who, which was a different designer, Michelle is highlighting three different, very important African Americans in each week of the sew along. So the Fat Quarter Shop has the pattern out there now. If you would do a donation to um, U, uh, UNCF, and then you can download the pattern there. It's there right now. You can order a kit if you want to do it, and the back. The backing of the kit, look at this backing fabric. It's fabulous. I don't have that. How did I miss that? So I had, what happened was, I actually had fabric. I had some of the fabric. So she, um, we're using um, Rashida's fabric and I actually had a bunch of it. So I only needed to add a few pieces. Let me show you. Let me show you how pretty this fabric is. Okay, here's my bin, my blue bin for Stronger Together. And I did get the threads, so I don't know that I'm going to cross stitch it, but just in case I decide all of a sudden to do that, uh, I am ready. I have it. So these are the beautiful fabrics. This is the navy that has the stars on it. And this is, I think, the chain, which is so cool. I had, so I had to pick that one up and I had to pick the navy up. But then the others are these speckles. Let's just come in a little bit. And the speckles come in a ton of colors. They're like a basic. Uh, and there's the peach. And this one has a bunch of different colors on it. Pinks and blues, yellows. And there's a yellow, it's like a tone on tone yellow. And then this medium pink. And then another, uh, a peach tone on tone. So the medium pink has, you can see in there, like blues and reds, a bunch of little colors, but they're very subtle. Then another shade of pink, and then a medium, and blue and a turquoise. So I had to get a couple of these pieces, but I had a bunch of the others, so there we go. These are the fabrics, and I just think it's a very, very cool quilt, and I love the idea. I mean, I've already downloaded the pattern, so, you know, I love the stories, uh, and in, um, Kimberly will be interviewing Michelle on her live stream January 20th, Friday, January 20th. She'll be interviewing her, so you'll be able to get to know her a little bit better. I love when she does that, so we can meet new people, um, or if you know them already, you learn a little bit more about them. Our, okay, now remember to enter for the um, Virginia Quilt Museum's um, kit, the giveaway. 
whenever I get to this part, I like stumble over all the words. I don't know what it is. It's like I know what I'm trying to say, but they just, the words just don't come out. So thank you all for hanging in there with me every time I go to say this. <laughs> Harrison Burke. I think I'm, I'm worried if I say Harrison Burke, you're not going to know what project I'm talking about yet because we haven't really started it yet. So you want to, you want to pick up your pattern. The print patterns are available and of course enter for the kit. Let's do a little Q and A. You know, whenever I hang the quilt, I didn't hang one today, but I have the quilt stand, I hang the quilt up. Uh, I'll put a picture up here. Several people wanted to know where could they get something similar. Uh, you can get, I have a link down below in the description box today to get a stand similar to mine. The one that we have was um, some the DJ lighting stand and then Greg ended up taking some metal rods and um, doing some you know soldering and whatever to have this other structure that we put on the top because at the time these kind were just not available plus we had four of these at one point and when we went on the road it was a lot of heavy duty work to put put them up take them down uh, multiple times during the during the time we were gone and so they got a lot of use we wore them out the threads stripped you know like because we had heavy duty use on them so we had a pretty heavy duty quality but we looked at this one and think that it's a that it's a really looks good and there's a video so you can go to that page and watch the video so it's very easy to set up so if you are looking it's wonderful for your own work um, they show it for like you could do for like party backdrops for uh, photos at a party like you know put a fun setting and People take their photos at it at a party. They showed some balloons on it, you know, etc. So it has multiple purposes. Okay, I need to get this other little thing. Hold on. <laughs> so this couple of people wanted to know where the little yardstick box came from. Yeah, fat quarter shop. So there's a link down below, and it's nice. I put, I put in my handwork. That's got uh, the threader. Uh, one of the rubber thimbles, a little pair, uh, unicorn scissors, of course, unicorn scissors. Whoops, didn't get it in the box. And um, yeah, that's that's what we keep in there. Got a wonder clip. So I keep this over right under my table on the other side because I tend to, when I want to stitch on labels or things like that, I'm always standing on the other side of the table. So that happens to be where it lives. So a bunch of different people ask me, you know, do I ever sew for fun? That's pr pretty much what you're trying to ask. Do, do I only sew things for, you know, my business here that I do for the video? Or do I have other projects that you never see that I sew? No, you see everything. <laughs> I don't see my, 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 I'm, I'm uh, like a regular person, you know? So when I do this videos, I am sewing what I would, re you're going to see me sew the horse fabric up for my great niece. I mean, it is, this is what I would call a quilting lifestyle channel. I don't, somebody assumed I had sponsors that made me do these projects. No, no, eh, 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 eh. nobody makes me do anything. I pick what I want to do. And if it happens to be something that people I work with are doing, great. Um, and I do that a lot because they've already organized it all. So I just kind of join in and I like it, but I only sew things I like. I mean, many, 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 many years ago, I thought, oh, I'm gonna sew for my business and sew for fun. But really, uh, that was a long time ago I had that thought because I've been in business 23 years and pretty much I sew what I like to sew and I sew it on camera or sew it in my, my public life. There isn't anything else behind the scenes that I'm sewing that you don't know about. Um, and I mean, unless I had to do like a magazine project, you know, or something like that. Well, you can't see that till it comes out, but it'll eventually you'll see it. Uh, so, so like I've, you've seen my birthday gifts I've given to my family. Um, yeah, everything. So for me as a, as a lifestyle, um, uh, video person, you know, as a lifestyle YouTuber, you just see the every day and what I do. It's like if you watch the garden answer lady, um, they're just short, Laura and her husband are showing you how they live while they're working their farm and their, well, it's like a garden, a garden farm. <laughs> and they, that is what their business is about, is showing you how to do all those things. My business is showing you how you can be a quilter or how I'm a quilter. And if you enjoy what I'm doing and you like being here, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Mwah. Um, but that is, you know, you, do, you see everything. It's all here. It's all here. All right, my friend, you are going to decide what are you doing with your pre-cuts today. And then we only have two more days of organizi organizing for January. And one, they'll be kind of recappy, you know, like, you know, loose ends kind of day. So basically this is Saturday and by Wednesday we are into February. So work, work, work it off, work it, get it done. Whatever you have loose ends, get it done. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.